A judge's husband cuts a deal with prosecutors. Now he's headed to jail. Early voting turns out to be a popular proposition here in Nevada. Today, a look at the record-making numbers. And police release new information about a deadly wrong-way accident. News 3 at noon starts right now. We are watching out for you. This is News 3 at noon with Angela Martin and Mitch Truswell. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We begin with a plea deal for the husband of suspended district court judge Elizabeth Halverson. Edward Halverson was accused of attacking his wife with a frying pan. Today, Halverson entered an Alford plea to a single count of domestic battery. That plea means he accepts there's enough evidence to convict him, but does not admit any guilt. Under this deal, Halverson avoids an attempted murder charge. He will serve between three and ten years in prison. Halverson his wife, Elizabeth, spent more than two weeks in the hospital after this attack. Doctors had to put more than 100 staples in her scalp. Election Day is still 12 days away, but tens of thousands of Nevadans have already cast their ballots. Yeah, they're taking advantage of the state's early voting program, and they're doing it in record numbers. Right now, there is a long line where News 3's Colette Wheeland is live. At one voting site, Colette, a lot of people you've seen just this morning cast their vote, hundreds of people. Yeah, the line moves fairly quickly. Talking to some people, it takes five to ten minutes, depending on how many people are in front of you. Right now, it's actually a little bit shorter than I was expecting for the lunchtime. I thought we would see a larger rush, but I tell you, this line has been well out the door of the Albertsons here. And at the end of voting on Wednesday, more than 60,000 Democrats in Clark County were able to cast their vote, and more than 30,000 Republicans walked away with the I Voted sticker. Sir, you want to step inside? Whether it's their very first time to vote, we have a first time voter, <laughs> or their traditional return to the polls. We regularly vote. Yes, we vote all the time. One thing's for sure these voters wanted their say early. Waiting in lines is something we don't like to do, so here we are. <laughs> Nearly 115,000 people cast ballots in the first five days of early voting here in Clark County. I think it's great that we've had so much involvement and people care and they're passionate this year about it. Dozens of voting sites have been set up at local grocery stores and shopping malls, giving everyone a chance to take part in this historic election. I think they've done a great job in the last um, six months and getting people enthusiastic and going through our community and canvassing. and. And you can see there are lots of people wanting to cast those votes early. The actual results will not be disclosed, though, until after the polls close on Election Day, November 4th. And if coming down to vote in this uh, exciting election is not incentive enough, well, guess what? We have an extra one for you. If you take your I Voted sticker down to the Flamingo box office for George Wallace. He's willing to give you a free ticket to his show just because you early voted. And that is good from now until November 11th. Once again, all you got to do is take your I voted sticker and redeem it for one ticket at the box office. Reporting live in Las Vegas, Colette Whelan, News 3. Okay, pretty good deal. Thanks, Colette. For a full list of early voting locations, you can log on to our website, kvbc.com. Click on the Vote Nevada 08 link. Also, Early voting continues through next Friday. More than 136,000 votes have been cast in Clark County during the first week of early voting. Colette just mentioned that. If you plan on waiting, though, until November 4th, Election Day, to vote, you can take advantage of a new service on Google. The search engine added a new search feature to its Google Maps page to help voters find their polling places. Voters type in their address, and then they click a button to get directions to their polling place. Mm. Well, there's only one way to vote from home, and that is with an absentee ballot. But some scammers are going to try to convince you otherwise. A local woman says she received an application in the mail to sign up to vote by phone. Election officials want to remind everyone you cannot vote by phone. You cannot vote online. This scam is similar to one police are investigating in northern Nevada targeting Hispanic workers, voters, I should say. In that situation, callers ask Latinos to vote over the phone if they support Barack Obama. It showed me that people are phony. I mean, very phony everywhere. It's just not the color of your skin or where you live or anything like that. It's 
right there beneath your nose. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just have to be careful. And if you do receive phone calls or mailers that you just don't feel are legitimate, you're asked to contact the election right away. Barack Obama is taking today off to visit his sick grandmother in Hawaii, and when he returns to the campaign trail tomorrow, Nevada will be his first stop. Obama is set to host a rally at Bonanza High School near Torrey Pines in Oki. The gates for that event open at noon. The rally is set to begin at 3. It's free and open to the public, but an RSVP is strongly encouraged on Obama's official website. Obama says he's not sure his 85-year-old grandmother will survive till election day. That is why he flew to Hawaii to visit her. Obama says he made the mistake of missing the opportunity to visit his mother before she died from ovarian cancer. He says he did not want to make that mistake again, even though there are less than two weeks until the election. Governor Sarah Palin says she will fight for special needs kids if she is elected as vice president. She's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania today, speaking to supporters there. Her six-month-old son, Trigg, was born with Down syndrome. Palin says parents of special needs kids would get more school choices with McCain in the White House. Under reforms that I will lead as vice president, the parents and caretakers of children with physical or mental disabilities will be able to send that boy or girl to the school of their choice, public or private. Palin says that she and John McCain would also make sure that the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act is fully funded. Well, young voters could play a big role in deciding who our next president will be. Recently, Kids First, Kendall Tenney, sat down with a group of nine first-time voters in a presidential election. They opened up about the candidates, the election, and what issues are important to them. You can hear what they have to say this Sunday. Kendall's Kids First Conversation on the Youth Vote airs at 6.30, right after News 3 at 6 o'clock. New details about a wrong way crash that left a Las Vegas man dead. Metro now says the blood alcohol level of the wrong way driver who caused the accident was nearly three times the legal limit. 28 year old James Legario faces two counts of reckless driving and driving under the influence causing death. Police say his blood alcohol level was 0.23. Police say he was driving the wrong way down US 95 when he smashed into a car. The driver of that car died. That was June the 5th when that accident happened. And new information on a deadly accident on the 215 that happened earlier this week. Metro tells us 31-year-old Richard Kaufman was killed when a cement truck hit him in the southbound lanes just west of the I-15. Kaufman was walking on the highway at the time of the accident, and it's still unclear why he was walking on the interstate. Well, six members of a local biker gang face a federal judge later on today. All six of these men were arrested during Operation Black Rain. They face charges ranging from drug trafficking to conspiracy to commit murder. Their arrests came after a six-state federal sting operation targeting the Mongols motorcycle gang. In all, agents served more than 150 arrest and search warrants. Local investigators say they gathered a significant quantity of evidence against the gang during the local raids. Governor Gibbons will have to turn over some copies of his emails to a newspaper or he'll have to explain why he shouldn't have to do so. The governor has until 11, uh, November 14th to respond to a Carson City District Judge's order. The Reno Gazette Journal sued Governor Gibbons for access to six months of his email. A hearing on this matter is scheduled for the end of next month. No word on what the paper is looking for in those emails. Well, if you are still waiting for your tax refund or a stimulus check, well, this could explain the big delay. The IRS is sitting on about $4 million worth of checks. That's because they were returned as undeliverable in Nevada. The vast majority are for people in Clark County. You can go to kvbc.com and click on Saving You Money to see if you are on that list and how to update your address. And if you don't have internet access, you can also call the IRS, the phone number on the screen right there, 866-234-2942 if you have questions about those stimulus payments. Time to get our first check of weather. And John is at a place I am going to guess is going to be very busy later on tonight, Fright Dome at Circus Circus.
So we're going to check in, but that's what's going down Circus Circus in the Fright Dome. We'll get back with John in just a little bit. Okay. I was like, is John dressed <laughs> yeah, up? Is he dressed up for the weather? <laughs> yeah. Okay, attacked for being a Republican. That's what a McCain campaign worker claims happened to her. Wait until you hear what a suspect did to her at an ATM. Plus, the search goes on for several people missing in a boating mishap off the coast of Alaska. And fire crews in Southern California battled their third fire this week. That and much more coming up on News 3 at noon on this Friday afternoon. It's been on Wall Street, not just for the local stock that we saw there taking a beating, but uh, the Dow has been kind of on a roller coaster today. It's actually doing a little better, a lot better than it was when it opened this morning. It was down 500 points. It's now down about 150 on the day with uh, 40, 50 minutes left in the trading day. She says she was attacked for being a Republican, 20-year-old Ashley Todd is a McCain campaign worker. She told police she was mugged at an ATM Wednesday. She says that they punched and kicked her when they saw the McCain Palin bumper sticker on her car. And then she says he used a knife to carve a B into her face, saying he'd teach her a lesson. Now, this is all under investigation. I understand they're looking at some tapes at the ATM. They're also making her take a lie detector test, but she says she was treated at the hospital and released after this attack. The trial of Senator Ted Stevens of Alaska is on hold. The judge in the case says he wants to accommodate a juror who needs to attend a funeral. Prosecutors wanted an alternate juror brought in so that deliberations could continue. The judge says the jury might need a break, though. There have been reports of stress and some out outbursts in the jury room. Stevens is charged with lying on Senate forms about $250,000 in gifts he received. The Coast Guard continues its search this morning for two crew members still missing after their fishing boat sank Wednesday. Of the 11 people aboard, four survivors, including the captain, have been found. The bodies of five crew members have also been recovered. The boat sent out a distress call early Wednesday morning saying that it was taking on too much water. It's been a busy week for firefighters in Southern California. And today they're dealing with their third wildfire of the week. A progress report is next. Thank you for making us your number one newscast at 12 o'clock. This is News 3 at noon. A new fire is burning near Los Angeles today. This one is just about 40 miles east of the city. The flames at the base of Mount Baldy have charred about 200 acres so far. Right now it is burning uphill and away from nearby homes. This new blaze comes as crews mop up after a separate blaze near the Getty Museum. A warning for extreme fire danger remains in effect in the Southland through Saturday. Okay, well we talked about him before. John Frederick's out at the Fright Dome, which is kind of the Circus Circus Adventure Dome, but yeah. remade for Halloween. And this time, oh, there he is. Okay, so did the monster get you in the first one? That's why we couldn't hear you, John? I don't know what happened, <laughs> Angela and Mitch, but this is our Christmas Creeper. This is the brand new theme uh, section of the uh, Circus Circus Fright Dome. They have five different haunted houses. This one is called Christmas Gone Bad, and <laughs> this is what they call the Christmas Creeper. Nice teeth, how are you today? Everything okay? Cool, love the hair. All right, who does your hair? Is it, uh, oh, oh. Yeah, Revlon. Okay, very nice. Um, they promised that they're going to scare me. Now, we saw Colette Whelan in here the other day, and they scared the daylights out of here, and they promised that they were going to get me sometime during the hour. Let's take care of business, and then... Uh, I dig this guy. Let's take care of business, and then uh, we'll get uh, we'll get the uh, Frederick's Fact. By the way, I do have a uh, family four-pack for the Frederick's Fact prize package. 
tickets to see Joel McHale, uh, the host of The Soup. You saw him in our studio last month. He's tonight at the Mandalay Bay Theater, and I've got a uh, free bike registration from RTC. Their big Viva Bike Vegas is tomorrow, so you're going to have to pick this stuff up uh, by tomorrow or by uh, this afternoon at 5. All right, as we roll through the graphics, an absolutely spectacular day outside, and we've got some wispy mid to high level clouds. Other than that, we're going for 82. Yesterday, officially out of McCarran, we hit 77 degrees. That is our average afternoon high. I tell you, though, we have got a mess across portions of the we got a mess across portions of the country. There you see the high from yesterday and the low this morning. But uh, the big story is a huge storm that is absolutely hammering the eastern third of the country. Tropical moisture flooding portions of the southeast, and we've got airport delays all across the eastern third of the country. In terms of uh, the next seven days for us, I tell you what, we are just going to be riding along and uh, sitting fancy free with temperatures well above average throughout much of the next. In fact, I don't see any any real significant change until the end of next week. It's a little hard for me to hear for you in here. I just got to tell you. All right, Frederick's fact. We, uh, we do this on average 12 to 18 times an hour, 12 to 18 times an hour. Again, Joel McHale tonight, four-pack Circus Circus Fright Dome and RTC bike registration tomorrow for Viva, Viva Bike Vegas. Back out here live in Christmas Gone Bad. And uh, check out this really cool Christmas tree. Isn't this neat? Look at it. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, if you guys can still hear me, I'm sending it back to you. Oh, That's my goodness. Really well, why do they have to bring Christmas into that? I know. It's just wrong. Well, it's not for kids, so, no, you know. No, it's definitely you, you not. you got to be, um, I think last time when I did the interview down there, they said like 12 or up. I probably would recommend even a little older. But, um, okay, so we told you about this story just a little while ago. Your heart went out for this woman who says that she was attacked because she had the McCain-Palin sticker mm -hmm. on her car. Yep. Turns out she made the whole story up. We're just now learning that. Uh, her name is Ashley Todd. Yes. And she said that uh, the story of being robbed, pinned to the ground, and having the letter B scratched on her face, they're saying, uh, police department back there saying it's all made up, and now they're going to pursue some charges against her. Yeah, she's going to be charged with making a false report to police. So, um, and who knows how she got that B on her, on her cheek there. She said somebody did it to her, but um, just uh, didn't Maybe have the evidence the to back Maybe that up. Who knows? Anyway. Okay, well. Coming up. Would you, could you uh, be willing to cut your hair off all for a good cause? Up next on the Noon Show, meet two people who are more than happy to do so. They're going to tell you why. I'm News 3's John Fredericks. Help out the Salvation Army Food Bank at their 10th annual food drive. It's this Saturday on Smith's at Rampart and Lake Mead in Summerlin. And on November 1st, it's the Alzheimer's Association Memory Walk at the Fashion Show Mall. Call 248-2770 for details. For a complete listing of community events, log on to kvbc.com. News 3, watching out for you. This community billboard is brought to you by Courtesy Imports and People's Auto Center. What might motivate someone to cut off all their hair? Well, I guess a good cause is the best reason uh, of any that I can think of. Our guests here are going to do that tomorrow. They're here to talk about why they're going to do that and who they're doing it for. Nick Abdul Rashid, your pediatric oncologist and also James Kilber, executive director of the Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada. And cancer is the reason why uh, you guys are, you're on ball tomorrow. That is correct, <laughs> that is correct. You a little nervous about that? Not really. It's for a great cause, Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation. You look good with no hair. Have you already kind of tried to see in the mirror? What? <laughs> I, I doubt it. My wife would know better than I do. But no, I, I don't think it's a good, good. but it's a great cause. It's a great, great cause. cause. Nick, tell me a little bit um, about how this all got started. This was just kind of a fun competition in, your, in the office uh, for some of the patients, some of the cancer patients. Right. Last year, my partner, Dr. Ron Klein, um, came up with this idea where he would try and raise funds um, and allow some of the some of our kids who's gone through you know 
uh, critical illness mm -hmm. uh, such as cancer where they lose their hair and allow them to cut his hair in, and eventually shave it off. So this year we were hoping to do this, you know, a bigger event for, for the same cause. And so now it's grown to a, a larger community event. You uh, were telling me that you've gotten quite a few organizations involved. Who's going to be there tomorrow getting their hair uh, cut and shaved? Well, the big sponsors that are helping us are, are the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Sheriff uh, Gillespie, Lieutenant Kevin McMahill, or Lieutenant McMahill is going to shave his head. Uh, Police dogs will be there, the horses. It's just a huge event. In addition, Mayor Oscar Goodman will be there. He'll be shaving my head. I don't know if he will be uh, cutting <laughs> well, Nick's hair. I'm going to cut my hair 10 inches. Yeah, Nick, well. no, now Nick is not going bald, but you're, you're no. giving 10 inches, which yes. is, um, you know, a great, and you, you have to, now did you know ahead of time that you were going, did you grow your hair out knowing right. that you yes. were going to be cutting it? Yes. Yes. It okay. has to be 10 inches. For has to be, them. okay. And the money is going to, what will this money go to exactly? It goes directly to the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation, which is a local organization here that all the money goes to Nevada. They've been here for 15 years. And it's for families who have been devastated by their children who've been diagnosed with these life-threatening illnesses, Good. chronic cancer and other illnesses. Great deal that the money stays here Absolutely. in town, helps folks here. Clip It for Kids is tomorrow from 11 to 2 at Metro Enterprise Command Center. That's uh, on Windmill Road. Do you know what the cross, road is, uh, cross street is, Rain Windmill? Rainbow and Windmill. Rainbow and Windmill, if you want to go out and uh, show your support. Thank you both for joining us and for what you're doing for the community. Mitch, back to you. All righty.